we struggle with even using our own decoupage paper. And so today, Zeb and I challenge ourselves to figuring out how to use our new Marie Antoinette print on a piece of furniture. We went and looked over at the church and we were looking through several pieces. We're like, well, it won't work on that. It won't work on that. So we decided to go with a fancy piece to go with our fancy paper. It fits perfectly for Marie Antoinette. We're gonna start painting this farm fresh. I'm not worried about 100% coverage on all the raised details because I'm gonna come in and two-tone it and add white to really make them pop. Then we'll come back with some decorative waxes and give this the royal treatment. DIY paint is all natural and clay-based. It has great coverage and it's totally safe to paint inside. If you wanna buy the paint and products that you see us use today, visit jamierayvintage.com. We'll put a full list in the description box below. The top of this is pretty shiny. It's plywood underneath this. I don't know what the top is. It's some kind of like stone, cement, faux finish. I'm just gonna sand it with 220 grit. The reason I'm sanding is this tabletop is going to probably get a lot of use. People stack things on it, drinks, all sorts of stuff. I wanna give the paint the best chance it has to adhere. So with this DIY paint, it doesn't take very long. You can see I got a little bit of powdery from whatever is on the top of this. I just want to dull it up. I don't need to sand it for hours and hours. Just get it dull and that's enough. I'm using DIY White Swan. We're going with a really light color on the top because Marie Antoinette paper is a really light color anyway and we want it to pop as much as possible. We want to brighten that up. When you're using the JRV decoupage paper, it's 18 pound on the weight, so it's pretty thin paper, and whatever you paint underneath that color will transfer through to the design on the top. So if you want bright, paint bright. If you want to dull it down, paint a darker color. All right, second coat going on. I probably only have to do two coats of this and then the paper will go on. We're getting really good coverage with this DIY paint. Oh, and we also spilled over the side and gooped. We spilled a lot over the side. Flung off the brush. The top is dry and we're just gonna leave it not distressed or anything like that. And I'm gonna just come on here and put a really nice heavy coat of DIY's liquid patina and then we'll let it dry. And then we'll show you how to iron on this decoupage paper. While the liquid patina is drying up there, I'm gonna come in and get my two-tone started. Sometimes I just like to use a stencil brush because it's nice and flat and I can just hit the raised surfaces with it without having to be too particular. If I happen to get paint where I don't want it, I just wipe it off and repaint it. This is the half inch JRV stencil brush. It's a prototype, so the handle's a little different, but it works well for raised detailing. It is time for Marie Antoinette to get put on here. It's, it's still just slightly tacky. It's pretty dry, like you can see I'm touching it. But if I left my hand sit here for 10, 15 seconds, it, you can feel it kind of want to lift. So I think it's, I think it's going to be perfect for laying this out. I've got my iron here and it's just set to the highest setting, which is usually cotton somewhere in there. And then no water in this at all. I want this no steam all the way dry and then parchment paper over the top. And I'm just going to work in sections and work my way up. Should we tell them we've never done this before? I've just seen it done on TV. Disclaimer, I've only watched other people do this. We've done it on a small piece, but nothing this large. The paper went over a little bit on the edge. I don't want that, so what I'm gonna do, I've got this knife and it's gonna look like a big O unwieldy weapon. You could use a razor blade. Just make sure you've got something really sharp. I'm gonna hold my paper down, and push up with the knife, and I'm just gonna, you could use the water cut method, but since I've already got this adhered and I don't, I don't want wrinkles, I think the water would make it wrinkly and I don't want to have to deal with that. So I'm just cutting it off with the knife here, right off the edge. So I'm, I'm holding the paper down and pushing up. Maybe just water cut it. Don't try this at home, kids. <laughs> Next level skills. I just don't want anyone cutting them and being like, I saw Zeb do this. Zeb does a lot of stuff that's not necessarily safe. I've got just a couple little pieces that are, that are up, so I'm just gonna roll that edge because I sealed over the edge, so I do have a little bit of sealer right there. Just to make sure that the edge is really, really adhered well. 
We've decided to use the rose chintz inlay. We're going to actually be putting it into liquid patina and not paint. And we're just gonna do this along the edge to kind of bring it all together. And the question is, does this line up? I think it does. So we're gonna transfer this over with liquid patina. I'm so sitting here for quality control. It's good, I need it right now. <laughs> okay. Kinda have to commit. We did not take into account that we were putting paper over paper and we were putting decoupage medium on it. So this could end very badly or... It might just be very distressed on the edges. It's just gonna be a little distressed, but I realize I gotta work kind of quickly. I don't want it to dry all the way. We might not get the full inlay transfer. Oh, it's going pretty good. The liquid patina isn't even dry yet. Yeah, but I realized I didn't want it to dry all the way because I was like, crap, if I decoupage that to the other paper, it's gonna really suck. So, a little bit of time. At reality time, the paper got saturated, it reactivated it, it wasn't adhered down because nothing had cured, we were just going for it. And we lost the paper in quite a few places, but we do still have some inlay on there. So I'm thinking this is asking for a heavy distress now. Well, we do need to fill in the holes over on that other side. Yeah. I think we're gonna let it dry all the way. We're gonna fill in those holes. We'll decoupage the rest of Marie, and once it's all the way dry, then we'll come back and address the situation. You know, it just looks like wallpaper that's starting to peel now. That's what it is. That's what we're going with. That's, uh, that was exactly our plan. <laughs> so we're gonna reseal this. We're gonna come back over with the iron, and then after that, we'll see about some tasteful distressing and see what happens. Or maybe untasteful, I don't know. So I'm just filling in these spots here with the inlay. I've put some more liquid patina down and then we'll let that sit for just a minute, get it wet, and then we'll peel that off. I'm gonna fill in this hole and up here too. I'm just distressing it to try to bring some uniformity to the chaotic situation. And I'm doing it by hand um, to go slow and steady. I'm worried if I use the orbital, it'll take too much off, but also this is painfully slow, so I might get that out. Now that I've come and distressed it, I need to go back over it with more liquid patina. I'll do a couple coats of this on top, and I think we're gonna do wax on the bottom so we can do some dark wax. Next up, we're gonna add some dark and decrepit to what? age. What? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, no. I don't know if we could ruin it at this point. It's I what don't know. it is. We've already, I'm to that point now where I feel like it's already been so bad it can't get any worse. Slightly damp. We're just, we're darkening this and decrepiting this. Here, if, it's kind of hard to see on camera just looking at it, okay? Bright, toned back with a little hint of brown glaze. Just a little. <sighs> oh, my heart. Your heart? <laughs> what is your heart saying? Your heart's like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Bless your heart. Bless Marie Antoinette's heart. We're going on with some DIY clear wax on the bottom. We could use the liquid patina on the bottom as well, but we're just gonna do the clear wax. This will help seal it up, make it very wipeable. And we like the kind of highs and lows that the wax is gonna give to the piece. It's gonna add some character and help it match that top since we went so distressed on the top. And then we'll come back with some dark wax and hit all these details and wipe that back. 
the clear wax will help us be able to control how much dark wax we have on the piece. And if we get too much, we can remove it pretty easily. If you don't clear wax first, that dark wax soaks into the paint and it can get really dark really fast. And it's hard to bring back once you do that. So you know when you get to that point in the project where we're like, well, I'm just gonna do everything that scares me in one project. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and dark wax this entire thing. I actually, dark wax doesn't really scare me anymore, but it used to. Because I was always worried that it was just gonna get too dingy and too dark, but I'm really loving it. And I want this piece to look like an old decrepit relic. And the only way to do that is to add dark wax. So. I'm gonna do it. Make sure you clear wax first or else it really will be a relic. It'll be a poopy relic. If you get too much on and you can't wipe it off, you can always add clear wax back to spread it around. So I almost told this to go eat cake. <laughs> I, that's not what I was gonna say, <laughs> but that's funny. <laughs> because it was a struggle. Like we tried to do something off label. I realized after we had started that we literally decoupaged paper to paper. What we should have done is sealed the decoupage paper, then done the inlay, then sealed on top of that. But you know, we missed a step there. Well, and we, would, we should have waited, right? Like, yeah. I don't know. And I'm not even sure that's like the right answer. The good news is we salvaged it, we made it look like an old relic, and we went with it. Sometimes the best pieces don't come the way you expect. There were a few moments where we almost just sanded the whole top off and repainted it and just walked away. I'm pretty sure that you told me when you walked away to not burn it. A minute ago, I was like, I gotta go get something out of the garage. This better not be burning when I get back. If you wanna create your own masterpiece, you can visit jamierayvintage.com for the paint and products used today. And if you like this video, be sure to share it out, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. <laughs>